Hi, and welcome to this 4NAV coffee break. My name is René Brummel. I'm a product specialist at 4NAV, and I will be your presenter today. As this coffee break is live, you can ask your questions via the GoToWebinar question window. We will answer them at the end of the coffee break. Today, we're going to demonstrate advanced section control in 4NAV. One of the recurring themes we see when we work with 4NAV reports is that sometimes sections need to be placed in more complex ways. Of course, we have controls that have different functions like header, body, footer, but sometimes you need sections that can do things that normal sections cannot. Today, we will address two of these issues. We will use a different header for follow-up pages and we will create a lines footer that can grow. To demonstrate advanced section control in 4NAV, I'm going to use these steps. Prerequisites, what do I need to get going? In step two, I will display the document header only on the first page. In step three, I will add a different header for follow-up pages. In step four, I will insert new sections in between data items. Let's start with the first step. Today, I will be demonstrating advanced section control in the Business Central on-premise server with the Business Central 2022 Wave 1 release. I've installed the 4NAV customizable report pack and I've executed the step-by-step -step wizard from the assisted setup to get started. Of course, everything I do today is also available, available on the Business Central SaaS environment. I also have the 4NAV designer installed on my PC. The 4NAV designer can be downloaded from the 4NAV website. The first scenario we will discuss is to display the header on the first page of a report only. It's not that hard because we can just set the uh, print on every page on the header to false. So let's go and have a look move over to Business Central and we will work on the sales invoice today because I've prepped some nice invoices with multiple pages. And I've created a webinar start layout for this webinar. And the only thing I did there is set the uh, master report for the document header to, uh, to empty so I can change the uh, document header properties. So if we want to display that document header only on the first page, we can set the print on every page to false and preview the report so I've got a uh, an invoice with multiple pages so right now on this invoice everything goes wrong let's try this again print on every page no Let's try this again. There we go, that's better. So right now on this invoice, we've got the header printed on the first page, but not on the second page, which is uh, kind of what we wanted. The problem is though, that if I print multiple invoices, you will notice how these four nav headers behave because I get the, uh, the header on the first page of the first invoice, not on the second page of the first invoice, but on the third invoice, I don't get any header at all because I've told for now, please print the header only on the first page. And with that, we get the header only on the first page of the entire document. So to change this on this uh, report, we obviously need to set print on every page to yes, because we do want to print it on every page. We just want to hide it on some of the pages. And we can do that as well uh, because we can hide or show the sections with our show output control. So if I open my show output control, you will notice it's now true. I can set, set the report dot page number. And we need page number here because that will be the, uh, the actual page that I'm printing on. Uh, page will display page one of the total number of pages. And that is going to be equal to one. So if report dot page number is one, the header will be printed. Hit OK and Let's run the report again. So let's run it for multiple documents. Now we've got the header on the first page of the first invoice, but not on the second page of the first invoice. And we do have the header on the first page of the second invoice. So that's exactly where we want it to be. Now 
And the second step, of course, is to create a secondary header that will print on follow-up pages. So now we know how to do this stuff. It shouldn't be that hard. All we need to do is create a new header section. So grab that and I will call, I will call that follow-up section. And the reason that I keep on naming my uh, my sections is that if I wanted to use this in a uh, in a master section, I can find it easily in the master section pull down. So it's it always pays to name your sections properly, and that will help your colleagues if they work on your reports because they'll know what is going on there. So I'll just grab some fields from the header. And move them about a bit. There we go. Doesn't matter that much as long as there's something there. So now we've got a first header with uh, with the addresses and all of the information, and a second header with just the logo and our um, header number and the page number. Then of course we need to set print on every page to yes, because it needs to be printed on every page. It's just that on the first page we need to hide it. So we do the show output trick again. Once again, report dot page number, and now we are going to say is not one. So if the report page number is not one, this header section will be displayed, which is the opposite from the uh, show output we used in the header. So let's try this again. Run it for multiple invoices again. First page we get the normal header. On the second page we get our follow up header. And then on the first page of the second invoice we get the normal header again. So that's exactly where we want it to be. So that's how you would display a different header on the uh, follow up pages of the reports. Now, of course, on the follow up pages of the report we have. Uh, we get a different header on the lines as well, because on the lines we get a trans header. Trans headers will be displayed on uh, only on follow-up pages, so you could play with the trans headers as well. Uh, but personally, I like this setup because it's uh, it's easy to see what's going on. Then finally, we want to add our ship to address in a new section between the sales line footer and the VAT section. Normally, we would use a footer section for this, but this has two disadvantages. First of all, footer sections can't grow, and in this, in this case, we want to grow to the size of the address. And uh, when you hide a footer section, it will continue to take up space in your document, because Fornav doesn't know when or how to hide it when, uh, when it renders the report. So, we need to figure out how to place a normal body section underneath our sales lines. Fortunately, we can do this. And we can do this with a very old Business Central trick. Because in Business Central we have tables, and those tables are related to data in the database. But Business Central also has a bunch of virtual tables. And we can use one of these virtual tables that doesn't contain any data, but will do something on the report in order to place sections where we normally can't place sections. So this data item we are going to use, I'm going to drag a data item into my system. And if I select the table, I will type integer. And you will notice that we've got a, I think it's 200 million. I can't count these zeros that fast. Um, but in a 200 million uh, table series, uh, we've got uh, some virtual tables. And one of those is the integer table. And if I use this, you will notice I get my integer table in my report. It's now underneath the VAT clause and the VAT amount line. So I'm going to push it up, and I will add it underneath my line. And if I look at the properties of this integer table, you will notice that this integer table has a data item view where number is going to be filtered from 1 and upwards, because this integer table is simply a table that counts from minus infinity to plus infinity, or minus a lot to plus a lot. It's not really infinity. Um, so it just starts counting at 1, in this case, with this filter. Uh, of course, we don't want this to count to actual infinity. So we need to cap the iteration of this data item. So I'm simply going to say max iteration is 1. And of course, 
you could place a filter on number, uh, filter only to one, that will do the same thing. Uh, I just play, usually use the, uh, the max iteration. So that gets me a data item with, uh, with one actual record inside it. And that means that on this data item, let's uh, give this data item a name as well. On this data item, I can add a body section. And in this body section, I can start placing some fields. And I will use the header field groups ship to address for this. And of course, I said I wanted can grow on this section because I want my section only to be as big as my uh, as my address needs to be. Let's grab a caption here as well, make it look really nice. We've got some time today. Um, ship to address. Do the alignments. And then the ship to address is going to get its can grow property set to yes, which means I need to set the alignment at top left. Normally it's middle general, and if you leave the alignment in the middle, then, it's, then a field can grow. And then on my body section, it is going to be the shipment body. Once again, we may need this in a master section, so section names are important. And then we will set can grow on the section as well. And finally, we only want to display this shipment body when we actually have a different shipment address. So once again, I'll play with the show output properties and I will say header dot field groups dot ship to address is not the same as header dot field groups dot build to address. So if I've got a different ship to address, this section is going to be displayed. So let's save it and run the report again. And I'll run it for multiple reports because one of these uh, one of these invoices does not have a ship to, a different ship to address, and the other one does. So on the first report we don't get our different ship to address, and on the second report we do. You will notice that our section grows to exactly the size it needs to be. Another advantage of this approach, like I said, I could have used a lines footer in this place and get, uh, get pretty much the same results. Uh, another advantage of this is that sometimes people want something in between the VAT amount line and the VAT clause. However, the VAT amount line is not always displayed in your report. So you can't really place a footer on your VAT amount line because it may or may not be dis displayed. So what you can do is simply move this one down. Then you've got a section in between your VAT amount line and your VAT clause, even though your VAT amount line might not be shown. So neat trick that we use a lot in our 4NAV reports. So let's recap what we just did. The first thing we did was to set the print on every page property of the sales invoice header to false. We noticed that this only worked when we printed a single document. When we used the show output property in combination with the page number, it worked better. We were also able to print a different header on a follow-up page using this method. Finally, we used an integer data item to place a new section where normally we, we would not be able to place anything. Thank you for listening to me so far. I can see we don't have any questions at the moment, so I'll wrap up this coffee break. If you want to know more about Fornav, or if you want to download the Fornav Designer and Convert it, please visit our website. If you want to install Fornav in Business Central Cloud, please visit the Microsoft App Source. And you can watch more videos about Fornav on our YouTube channel. If you have any questions about Fornav, please email them to support at fornav.com. For a full list of upcoming and recorded coffee breaks, please visit fornav.com slash coffee break. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.